Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hayes and this is my first video for my YouTube channel in year 2022. So I'm sure that by now you guys have heard of NFTs and also gun art, AI art and what those things are. But if you have been living in a hole, don't worry, I have you all covered because today we are going to generate some gun and AI art and then transform them into an artwork that is worthy of posting on social media. So what is GAN or AI art? So AI actually stands for artificial intelligence which means that instead of using human intelligence to do something, they are actually using machine intelligence to create something. So in this instance, the art is actually created using machine intelligence. So there are different types of machine intelligence for this purpose itself but commonly the types used are procedural coding and algorithms and patterns and also what we call deep learning algorithms. So today we are actually going to explore deep learning algorithm because GAN is all about deep learning algorithms. GAN actually stands for Generative Adversarial Networks and basically GAN has a lot of subtypes as well. So today with the subtype that we'll be looking at is text to image GAN. So this type of GAN can actually create artwork from text input. GAN basically is made of two components which is a generator and discriminators. So the generators will actually generate out the images based on discriminator values. And now we're gonna look at this app called Wombo which is one of my most favorite GAN generating art app. So this app uses the text-to-image GAN algorithm to generate artworks and all we have to do is to enter in a descriptive text here full of keywords for it to use as a discriminator. So the discriminator used in this algorithm for this app is not only the text itself, we actually also get to choose an image style or upload our own image as well. So once you have entered your text and pick an image style, the app will then use these two variables as their discriminators and generate out an artwork for you. So here you can already see that I have generated an artwork called Cat Waffles. So this is actually quite cool because the artwork that is generated is really really funky based on the input that you provide. And the amazing thing is artists have always looked for a button to push whenever clients ask them to create artworks, to do changes and now there is actually a real button for us to push to generate artworks on the fly. It's really really amazing. So today I'm actually going to create an artwork of a girl with a metallic fox mask. So it's really really specific and I am going to see what this app is going to do with my keywords. So there we go. If you can see here, the result is not really up to my expectations because art is always subjective. So I'm going to hit generate again. And if you generate again, they will use the same discriminators and generate a new image for you. Once I have a result that I am happy with, we can then press publish and then it will then save it into our account. Using the same text prompt, I tried different image styles to generate more artworks and I collected like a couple of them that I really really like. So here are all the artworks that I have generated so far with the text prompt girl with a metallic fox mask. And if you see here, the artworks are mostly 70% abstract with 30% realism. So there are a lot of details that were lost in the generation and this is where our skills as artists can come in. So I'm going to use my artistic skills to make this artwork less abstract, at least giving this artwork a face and a real fox mask. So in a way, the GAN art is helping me with visualization and conceptualization. So you can also use it for um, keeping the brush strokes if you like the brush strokes or using it to generate color palettes as well. So I've exported all the artworks to Procreate and now the first thing to do, the most important thing to do is to identify what I love about each artwork because I have to keep the things that I love from those artworks. So I love the background from this piece, so I am going to reframe this artwork by cropping and resizing it. Then I copy more abstract elements from the background that I love and reposition them to fit my new composition. So 
So now here's where the skills of an artist are important because right now I'm going to roughly sketch in the face and the fox mask onto this artwork. And I'm also taking the same time to decide what to keep and what to discard from the artwork. I also try different angles of the fox mask to see which will suit better but I really like the abstract strokes flying upwards on the right side so I'm gonna see if I can keep that like wings for the fox Next, I have a 3D head reference that I keep in my Procreate. I've actually modeled a couple of 3D heads for my portrait posing and everything so I will actually save uh, this pack that I can share with you guys later on but for now I'm still testing these three heads because I'm experiencing like some problems with the model's uh, proportions itself so basically I use these heads as a reference in my painting whenever I draw to get the proportions that I want so right now I am going to adjust the camera angle for this 3D model here and once I have the angle that I want that matches the artwork that I'm going to create I'm going to adjust the lighting and environment so the lighting and environment is a place where we can adjust the color of the lights and this affects the color of the skin because the skin has such a neutral color any color of the light would bounce off it and create a different color so I'm adjusting the color of the lights in order to match the color palette of my artwork so it's very important because the face needs to be in a color that gels with the whole artwork so once that is done I can then move the iris itself because the iris is in a different layer in the 2d texture i can actually move it so that it appears as if she is looking at the viewer instead of looking down and finally i can screenshot this and put this into my layer in my artwork for the fox mask i am trying to seek inspiration from sketchfab so Sketchfab is a website where 3D artists can upload their 3D models. So you can actually preview the 3D models itself by posing it and turning it around. You can use this to find perspective angles and to check perspective whenever you are trying to insert something into your scene when you are conceptualizing a painting. So right now I am trying to see if I can find fox masks that is suitable for my painting and I found these two masks that I think is quite suitable so I'm gonna pose them in the angle that I want them to be and then I can quickly just screenshot and put them into my Procreate to check if everything works so once everything works I can then quickly sketch the face and the fox mask so I don't need an exact sketch because this is not a very tight and realistic painting with the new sketch, I'm going back to the current artwork which has the background that we already adjusted before and I'm going to use the liquify tool to push the strokes around so that they fit within my sketch. So by doing this, we are adjusting the proportion of the strokes in the abstract artwork and we are removing a lot of abstractness from the artwork itself and introducing more control and realism. I can also decide which parts to keep and which parts to discard at this point. This workflow will make you feel like a boss of an artist because you get to make a lot of decisions that steers the artwork to where you want it to go. Because sometimes as an artist, if we are creating the artwork, we are so zoned into the creation itself, we forgot to direct the artwork where it can have more impact. So now I'm just going to add a couple of strokes to the hand to suggest that it exists a little bit more I don't want it to be too realistic I still want it to be a, a bit more abstract but I want it to be recognizable that is the most important thing but when people look at it they need to see that it is at hand and I'm using this version of the gun generator artwork for my skin palette so this version of the artwork has a lot of skin tones in them and it's very easy for me to just pick colors from this artwork itself and to dump them into my current work in progress so this is how I got started with the face. I used the colors from the other artwork to test colors on the face and, and quickly just scribble them down to test the colors and the values for the face. And I continue doing this until I have a resemblance of face. So once I feel that I am somewhere there and I do not have any other values or colors that I want to add, I can move on to the next stage. 
So anyway, in this artwork, I'm using brushes from my brush pack Portrait 2022. So if you are interested, you can get them in the link in the description below at hazelong.com. So now I'm cleaning up the strokes by smudging them so I can give more definition to the face and decide where the hard edges would be. After I'm done with smudging, I usually have a clearer idea of how to proceed with the details. I don't like to overwork my portrait in general and I usually just paint in details that are just enough to suggest that the face is there. So when the face is done, I can actually just pick colours from these parts and use them to craft her hair out. I'm just reusing bits and pieces of the generated artwork to fill in the gaps here so I can extend back the hair into the strokes of the generated artwork to make it look really really seamless but the difference is the generated artwork of course is of a lower resolution so you can actually see that it's a little bit pixelated then I go to this version of the Gant artwork and I can see that there are some abstract strokes in the face that I really really love so I'm going to um, copy paste some of them into my work in progress. I assimilated the strokes into my artwork by erasing the parts that I do not want and then I can adjust the shape of it. And I can also adjust the color, brightness and the chroma of the strokes itself to match my artwork. Now it looks a lot better because the background is so abstract, it does not make sense to have a face that is completely clean and realistic right smack in the middle so we have to introduce more noise to it by doing things like this. Now for the mask, I use the same steps and process but I use another generated artwork as a reference. So here I have a GAN artwork generated from Wombo that has a lot of gold metallic tones for the mask. I can form the mask to my sketch by transforming it first. So I'm actually going to use the warp feature in the transform tool. So I'm going to warp all the points to conform to my sketch as much as possible before I go into liquify. So if your image is too distorted, it's not a great idea to immediately begin liquefying it because it will create a lot of unwanted waves and warps. So it's better to start with the transform tool first using the warp function and then move into the liquify tool after that. So once it is warped into the shape that I want, I can then repaint bits and pieces of the mask to make it look more realistic. So the generator art will actually provide a lot of help in terms of the reflections and the highlights and I can just form them to fit the proportions of the mask that I have. So after that, I'm basically done. So I can actually just keep testing my artwork on different crops of the background to see which works better. So which one do you think looks better? Do you think that this artwork can be defined as art? Or do you still think that gun artwork shouldn't exist? Because there is a possibility that consumers can actually generate artworks for their home, their shop, their businesses and their offices without the help of an artist in the future. So bearing that in mind, what do you think that we should do as an artist to keep ourselves relevant in the future? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye! Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end.